as I got into my late 30s then, I, I can, began to have this um, inner battle and a little bit of discontent within myself. And it, I, was, I felt as though I was living someone else's dream. And I wasn't necessarily moving in the direction that I wanted to. But at the same time, I didn't know what my dreams were. Welcome back, everyone, to the Geeks, Geezers, and Googleization Show, the home of Googleization Nation, where we talk with HR and business thought leaders about the crazy shift going on all around us and explore the disruptive convergence of technology, business, and people. Here are your hosts, Ira Wolf and Jason Cochran. And welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Geek Skeezers Googleization, a show from the People Forward Network. I'm Jason Co Cochran, hosting solo today. Um, Ira is away, but he'll be back with us again next week. Thank you for being part of Googleization Nation. If you think this is just another podcast, think again. We are the voice of the most important, crucial conversations that are confronting business leaders and people today. Our goal is to bring you ways to reimagine tomorrow, and explore the impact and convergence of business, technology, and people. Now, this episode of Geek Skeezers and Googleization is sponsored by our partner, Why Institute, your personal and professional GPS for a meaningful life and purpose-filled career. You'll hear more about the Why Operating System and Why Institute later on in the show. We have a massive divide in the American workplace that we need to discuss today. In the latest edition of my newsletter, Reimagining Work, which you can follow on LinkedIn or Substack, I just released it yesterday. I touched on this divide, and this is uh, the, the divide is the stark contrast in the work experience between leaders and frontline employees. I'm going to share more on that in our perfect labor storm segment in just a minute. But suffice it to say, we have many double standards at work which are making it difficult for staff to get as much meaning and fulfillment from their work as the leaders are getting from their work. Here are just a few of those double standards that often are in place in the American workplace. How about golden parachutes for executives that demonstrate poor performance? Employees, if they have poor performance, they're simply let go. There is no golden parachute for them. How about Overemployment. this is a term that you're probably hearing more of. There are many leaders who are complaining about employees being overemployed. That is, maybe they've got side gigs or other things that they're doing outside of their normal work hours. Well, the double standard there is overemployment from senior executives where they are serving on or in multiple boards or investor groups or being adv advisors to others outside the organization seems to be fine for the top level executives, but they don't care uh, as much about that, or they, they do, they, they don't wanna see that with their frontline employees. So there's a double standard there. And then just one more example of a double standard we often see in the work experiences. Uh, sometimes executives are traveling and they have the opportunities to work flexibly or remotely, but some of them do not want to allow those same freedoms for their teams. And so we're going to discuss one of the remedies today um, with our guest, certified dream coach, Mark Kumachek, and a good friend of mine. Mark is going to share how dream programs can help bridge this divide that we're seeing and experiencing between top level executives and frontline employees so that everyone in the organization is getting that sense of purpose and fulfillment. But first, before we get to Mark and bring him on, it's time for our perfect labor storm segment. On each episode, we focus on just one disruptive, surprising, or worrisome trend that we think you should know. Here they are for this week. According to McKinsey, 70% of people define their purpose through their work. Work is a huge part of our lives, no doubt. It, it, it isn't our full identity, but it absolutely contributes a big part to what we are. So 70% of people define their purpose through the work that they do. McKinsey also shared recently that 85% of executives report living their purpose at work. And here's that, uh, that chasm, that divide. Only 15% of frontline employees feel the same way. So 85% of executives 
feel like the work that they do gives them purpose, but only 15% of frontline employees feel like the work that they do is filled with purpose. And then how about Gartner's research? According to Gartner, in 2022, 65% of employees reported the pandemic made them rethink the place that work should have in their life. So 65% of employees are just questioning, what do I want work to be in my life? Where does it fit in the picture? And then in that same report from Gartner, 52% of employees reported the pandemic made them question the purpose of their day-to-day -day job. So lots of people wondering about why they're doing the work that they do and what is it contributing towards, not only for the greater good, but also for themselves. How is it helping them achieve their dreams? Just as a reminder, you can get SHRM recertification credits if you're an HR leader for listening to this episode. Just reach out to Ira or myself, and there's just a short form that you fill out really quickly to demonstrate that you listen to each episode, and you can get up to a half credit for each episode. Also, if you have not subscribed to our free community, Googleization Nation, you can do so by going to googleizationnation.com. Um, and sign up for free. All we need is your email address. And then lastly, if you haven't rated, reviewed, subscribed to the podcast, please do so. Every single one helps. You're the reason that we're now in the top 1% of all podcasts in the world. You're the reason that we're now hitting over 50,000 downloads a month and continue to grow. So thank you for all of your support. So without further ado, this seems like the perfect time to welcome today's guest on the show, Certified Dream Coach, Mark Kumachak. Hey there, Jason. Hey, Mark. Welcome to the show. How you doing, my friend? Awesome. It's great to be here. Looking well, forward to a beautiful discussion with you. Awesome, man. Yeah, and for those who are just listening to the episode, you won't be able to see it, but Mark has a beautiful display of Christmas lights behind him, compliments of his son. we got to point that out for the people um, that may not even be able to see them, but incredible display, and it's great to see you this time of year, my friend. Well, I say, let's, let's go ahead and start here, okay? Let's start with your story. Tell us a little bit about you, and I'm sure we have a lot of people wondering, what is a certified dream coach? So tell us about who you are in your journey of how you became a dream coach and what exactly is that? Sure, absolutely, Jason. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of shorten the story at the beginning. I was in traditional roles for the majority of my career. Um, so as I got into my late 30s then, I, I can, began to have this um, inner battle and a little bit of discontent within myself. And I was, I felt as though I was living someone else's dream and I wasn't necessarily moving in the direction that I wanted to, but at the same time, I didn't know what my dreams were. And I wasn't even asking myself these questions at that point in time. I just knew something was off. Uh, but push came to shove. One day I went and I quit my job after 15 years with an organization with a family and two kids to support and all that stuff. I took the leap and said, I'm going to take all this and go do some consulting work, whatever that looked like. Didn't necessarily know what that looked like. But during that period of time and in the, in the years following that, a book crossed my path called The Dream Manager by Matthew Kelly. And that book really put words to what I thought was important from a leadership perspective and what was important in people's lives. And it helped me personally get in touch with my life goals and dreams again. Uh, so I read this book. I'm like, great concept. It's about an organization that resolves some um, retention and employee experience, employee engagement issues, some significant ones by trying something non-traditional, by putting a person in place called the dream manager, who was a resource to their people to help them articulate, plan for, and ultimately get after their life goals and dreams. And in doing that, when they put this person in place, uh, they started to see some things change within the business. They're, not only did their turnover get to a more respectable level within their industry, uh, but they started to see people show up to work with a higher level of energy. And there was a higher level of loyalty, quite frankly, from a business perspective, too. Um, because, Jason, I know if I ask you, how do you feel about the people in your life that have helped you bring your life goals and dreams to fruition? I'm sure it's a, you, get, you get a good, pretty good feel. Uh, that feels good. You love those people. Um, so that naturally left to a little bit more of loyalty. Um, so that book crossed my path. I played with it, experimented with it. Um, and it seemed to be an itch that really wouldn't go away. Uh, so back in 2019, then I actually went to a certification class, Dream Manager certification, which is put on by an organization called Floyd Consulting. 
And I went through that process and voila, became a certified dream manager and have been working ever since of bringing this type of programming to businesses uh, throughout the United States. Well, and it, you are a close personal friend of mine and you have helped me um, on that journey of discovering my dreams too. And so you, you know, you mentioned, you know, if people stop and they think, who are those people in their life? that have asked the right questions at the right time. Like, right. what are you doing? Do you love what you're doing? Exactly. Where do you see yourself in three, five, 10 years? What is it that you're passionate about? You're one of those people in my journey that, that did that and, and, and helped me make sure that I was living my why. And so um, thank you first and foremost for that. But then the other thing too, is there've been so many people that you've opened doors to um, that have helped me along the way too, that have been a part of this journey. And one of them will give a shout out to her is Tanya Dittman. Yes. Um, in fact, I think Tanya is one of the people who actually connected us, but it's so powerful to see when you get like-minded people who are trying to, to chase their dreams, even though they may be different dreams, there's power in that sense of community. Absolutely. And so maybe, maybe speak into that a, a little bit in terms of what do some of the, the programs, the offerings, the, the techniques and things that you do, what does some of that look like whenever you come alongside a person or a team on the business side of things to start helping them dream? Yeah, so there's, there's a couple different approaches you could take in order to, to start this either at an individual level or a business level. But one of the spots I really like to begin is doing an exercise called a dream storm similar to a brainstorm, but we, what we do is we work through a series of fun and reflective questions that really inspire and invoke dreams and give people permission to dream again, because uh, we tend to have this dream deficit thing going on in our, in our world. Okay. And I'll, I'll kind of explain that to you. What it is, is we, from the time we're nine, 10, 11 years old, where we dream without limits to the time we become quote unquote responsible adults, we tend to not give ourselves permission to dream or don't make time and space in our life to do it anymore because we're just so busy and we're taking ourselves a little bit too seriously or we don't think we deserve to dream anymore. So an exercise like a dream storm, whether you do that individually with a people or with a person or you do it collectively within a team, provides um, a, some fertile ground uh, to give someone permission even for an hour or 90 minutes to dream again. And then once you get people starting to dream again, there's going to be one or two dreams that come out of that conversation and that reflection time that sit on top of their heart. And that's that natural door into helping them now take it from dream to plan to action um, in the upcoming weeks, months, and years ahead. I love two things in particular you just shared there. Number one, that the, the first step is a dream storm. Um, I absolutely love that. And of course, you heard earlier, we've got a segment called Perfect Labor Storm. Yeah. Uh, ours, unfortunately, is about many times the wacky stuff that's going on that needs to change in a positive way. Your dream storm is about the positive stuff that people need to do to get back on track. Right. About work and their life. But the other one you talked about that I think it fits in well with the data we just shared that's from uh, Gartner, um, that's also from McKinsey. And that is, you use the term dream deficit. Um, all of those data we just talked about earlier are supporting that a lot of people have dream deficits um, and that they're not seeing much of a point to the work that they do, aside from punching in and out each day, <laughs> right. transactionally to be able to pay bills. Mm -hmm. um, Bad. And eventually that leads to a lack of fulfillment. Um, and, and it seems like, what happened with COVID is a lot of people kind of got taken off the hamster wheel and all of a sudden it was, okay, there actually is another option here. Like yeah. you can actually look at work and I can say, this is the life or the dream I want to have. And then work can fit around it yeah. instead of operating the other way around saying, okay, I've got to go to work. I got to go do something. What's the life I can build around that. So so tell us a little bit in terms of the business perspective, um, in terms of how this works, are there ever reasons that companies give or leaders in companies give where they're like, okay, Mark, you're talking about dreams. This sounds like foo-foo fluffy stuff. Um, how do those conversations typically sound when you're coming in and saying- Oh, of course. No, yeah, that, that, 
Yeah, Jason, that happens all the time. I mean, people unfortunately view the word dreams as a soft, fluffy word, as you just said. Um, but you can interchangeably use it as a use life goals. If that term fits better, if you want that rather than calling it a dream program, call it helping people create a strategic plan for their life centered around something like that. You can use business terms. It's all the same stuff. It's just the, how you want to best position it within an organization and what works for your people and your leadership team. Um, so there's, yeah, you, you have to work through that particular um, objection right away because it does come across as a fluffy term um, in a lot of business circles. Um, well, I love what you just shared there, the strategic plan for life. I mean, that is, that is, that's business terms. And as, as we've also learned from, from one of our sponsors, Y Institute, if you don't have answers to these really important existential questions as a person, Right. about why you're doing the work that you do, what type of impact that it does, then eventually it does just become something that's monotonous. Absolutely. And if you help a person um, create and execute on a strategic plan for their life, as a business leader, business owner, I think those people that do that are far more likely to help you bring your business strategic plan to life. So if they're not willing to do it for their own life, they're likely not going to be all that fired up about helping you with your business's plan. Um, so help them do it in their own life and they will naturally start to help you with your plan at an even higher level. And so with this, this framework, I'm sure there's a lot of research you've done, uh, work that you do, things that you get from the Certified Dream Manager program. Can you share with us, what are some of the, the most important pieces, mental models, frameworks that come alongside this program to really help it be successful um, not only with individual people, but inside businesses? Sure. Uh, one that I'll, I'll bring to the forefront, and I've kind of played with this one and, and built it on my own by taking the Dream Manager book I talked about and bumping it up against um, Good to Great by Jim Collins, where he talks about the flywheel concept, right? So the flywheel within a business and how it helps create a sustainable business model going forward. Um, so I kind of bump those two together and think about it as the, the personal best version flywheel, if you will. And on the top of that, you've got a dream or a life goal that someone's going to get after. Then as they work down the right-hand side of that flywheel, as they move towards that dream or goal, they're going to learn some planning skills and they're inevitably going to learn some other skills associated with achieving that particular goal. And at the bottom of that circle, Jason, they're going to ultimately achieve it. There might be some iteration that takes place in order to get there. It might take some time. But when they achieve that goal, this is where the magic happens. Then that person on the left-hand side creates an increased level of confidence. And when they increase, increase their confidence level, where does the flywheel go next? Back up to an even bigger dream or goal to get after. So you can build a crazy amount of momentum on that. And if you imagine from a business perspective, what if everyone in your organization was working on their own personal best version flywheel like that, and they were creating momentum on that? What would that mean to your business? So it doesn't always have to be these big, fancy, elaborate, huge dreams that people get after. A lot of times it pays to start out with a couple of ones that are a little, a little smaller. It might take a few weeks or months to get started because you build momentum on that flywheel. I love that. And, and I love the other word you used, momentum. Um, in psychology and a lot of the work that I've done, we talk about positive behavioral momentum and yeah. how you just described it. Sometimes in order to get to the big goal, you've got to have some smaller successes along the way in order to get right. there and build positive momentum. Same thing with weight loss. You know, you're not going to celebrate you know, 40 pounds of weight loss until you lose the first pound, right? so right. to speak. Um, but it seems to me, when I think back on on a lot of the, uh, the trainings uh, in psychology that I had, one of the things I keep thinking about and coming back to is research that came from Martin Seligman, yeah. um, who's a very well-known psychologist. And he's credited as being the person who discovered the phenomenon we call learned helplessness, um, where basically that people fall into a response pattern of, why try? It's always going to be bad, mm -hmm. um, for lack of a better term. And he discovered that um, back in the, the 50s or 60s, I believe. And I can't help but think that we have a lot of people that in their relationship with whether it's the leadership, whether it's the workplace itself, whether it's the work itself, like the tasks that they're doing, that we have a lot of people who are experiencing learned helplessness of I feel like I'm just going through the motions. Things are never going to get better. They're not going to change. 
where does where do these dream programs come in to kind of break people out of that cycle of learned helplessness? Well, what they're doing is you're introducing, to your point earlier, some positive psychology to things, right? You're freeing up people to think about what's possible in their lives. And there's a lot of times, going back to that dream storm concept, there'll be people in those rooms when I do these, inevitably, there's a good portion of that room that is extremely skeptical walking into that. And they're like, what is this about? I don't want to do this. This isn't for me. I'm a grown up. <laughs> this isn't something that uh, really sits well with me. A good portion of those people by the end of a dreamstorm session, after you work through these questions in a specific order that warms them up to them, um, will leave there and they might not come up right away, but a lot of people will come up after and say, hey, that's exactly what I needed today. Or, you know what? No one's ever asked me those types of questions before. And just to give you a sense, we're, we're covering everything, Jason, from travel related dreams to hobbies and pastimes to relationship stuff to habits. Um, we run everything career-wise. We get into stuff like that. So we touch on everything um, that you could possibly have a dream or a life goal revolve around in your life over that period of time. So I think that's what it does is it creates that fertile ground. It gives people the gift of a little time and space to free themselves up and think about life's possibilities as opposed to what's going wrong. Left unchecked, our minds tend to go towards what's not working versus what's possible. And Frankly, where are we winning? Because every one of us is always winning in one way, shape, or form if we stop and pause and think about it. And so you mentioned something interesting there is many times the dreams may be things that aren't related to work. Maybe it's, okay, I'm using the work in order to be able to get this house or be able to do a specific type of vacation or, or whatever it might be. Is there ever a time where the type of dream coaching that you do, the programs that you have, where you're actually trying to improve attitude toward the work that they do, or that there's actually dream goals tied to the work itself to make it more intrinsically motivating. Yeah, that naturally happens. Just as the as, as a person works towards achieving a life goal and dream, um, they're going to become more engaged in life as a whole. And when you become engaged in your own life as a whole, when it comes to crossing the threshold, whether that's in person or, or virtually, uh, that threshold into the workplace, uh, you will naturally start to show up to work as a more engaged person. I see it all the time. That aside, Jason, though, a lot of dream conversations do turn into um, what does my career path look like going forward? And we do get into that. Um, but it's not exclusively about their dreams within a workplace. It's all encompassing of their, their total life goals and dreams. What does that look like? What's that picture look like? And generally speaking, we identify uh, three life goals and dreams that we work on um, in concert with each other um, over a series of, of dream sessions that we have. And so we, we have a lot of HR leaders um, who listen to the show. So I'm sure in their heads right now, they're wondering, well, how does this work? Like, would Mark come alongside and work with me? Like, how does that become part of the, the strategies within the business itself? So as you're working with the individuals, is there ever a time where you're then taking that and working with an HR leader or the talent leader and saying, hey, with this particular person, here's the career path that they're looking for. How do we help them achieve this in the organization? Do you ever collaborate with, with HR leaders on those things? Yeah, absolutely. That happens quite often. Um, I do respect the level of confidentiality uh, because as I'm working with someone, an individual, um, I do make it clear that's a safe ground for them. Uh, but if, if we come up with a certain career path and life goal and they're on board with us sharing it and getting their leader or HR involved, um, we oftentimes have those conversations, which is a lot of fun. Oh, I bet. Absolutely. And so it's got to be reassuring too, also for the HR leaders to know this isn't completely on them, that right. they almost have an external um, consultant coach expert that's coming alongside that's helping to tease out some of these things that really matter to people on their team. And many times those people on the team probably would not be as comfortable sharing that information exactly. with someone that they view as being inside the organization. And so it not only allows you to leverage your specific skill set, but it also probably um, puts a lot of people at ease saying, hey, I'm a lot more comfortable sharing this information with a dream coach right. like Mark than I would necessarily someone internally in the organization, especially if there are concerns around psychological safety. Absolutely. It's exactly how it works, Jason. You described it to a T. And, you know, sometimes, frankly, sometimes someone's dream might take them out of an organization as well. If their career path, is, if there's some limiting things and they can't find resolution there. So I've certainly had that happen in circumstances as well, 
Um, but we've always worked on it being a win-win um, because a lot of times it's, hey, you think about if some if you're helping someone go from a professional house cleaner. So I work with a cleaning company and, and they don't want to scrub toilets the rest of their life and they move on to some bigger and better opportunity outside of the organization. Um, you got to make sure that leadership's aligned with that being a, a, a real possible next step for some people. Uh, but what you do there is you, you create a cool, again, level of loyalty and referral source. So if this organization helped you develop and move on in your life and get where you wanted to go one year from now, wow, I think you're going to tell a lot of good stories about working at that place. I'm so glad you brought that up, Mark, because I think we're at a, an interesting place right now with businesses where more leaders are starting to understand that, that you shouldn't wish the worst for people when they're leaving. You need to do everything you can to set them up for success, even if that means leaving your organization and yeah. taking a better opportunity elsewhere. Number one, because it's the right thing to do. Um, that's why you're a leader is to serve. And you should always be uh, having that mindset of what can I do to help this person advance to be their best selves? And if that's somewhere else, great. But secondarily is this concept of employer brand. What's it like to actually work in the organization? You want those folks to say, hey, even though it was time for me to move, move on, this will be a perfect place, great culture for you to uh, go take this position that came up. And I'll put in a good word for you with the hiring manager there. Um, so I was happy to hear you share that, that sometimes we need to uh, always be looking uh, for the, the, the ways we can help other people um, and that that good fortune eventually comes around doing things the right way. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Um, and on the other side, Mark, when we come back after a, a couple minutes here to hear from our sponsors, I want you to think about maybe a story or two that you'd like to share that was transformational, whether it was a, a specific person, obviously you don't have to mention their name um, or company, same thing, don't have to mention their name, but just think about maybe a couple transformational stories that shows the power of when you have a structured strategy, plan and approach like you bring on how to tie dreams and purpose to work of how that helps people flourish. So we're gonna give you a couple minutes to think about that um, and we'll look forward to discussing that on the flip side. So we're going to take a couple minute break here and hear from our sponsors. We'll be back. For most of us, change is freaking terrifying. And unfortunately, there's no app to adapt. That might change in the not so distant future. But for now, we're on our own. That means we can either accept our default future or reimagine our tomorrow. For those of you who choose default, good luck. Just remember, there's no pause button for change. You can't turn back the clock. And there's no get out of jail free card in this age of perpetual uncertainty. Like it or not, change will happen all around us. And that change is not becoming just more disruptive and frequent, but volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, or VUCA. Fortunately, you can make change work for you and turn it into your personal and competitive advantage. Reimagine your future to one in which you're living with purpose, you're happy, and you're growing, thriving, and flourishing. If you're ready to rewrite your next life chapter and regain control of your destiny in this never normal world, your journey starts here. Contact the leader in adaptability and making change work for you, your team, and your organization. Ira S. Wolf, adaptability.expert. There's a certain kind of coach who believes what we believe, who leads people to greatness, who gets people unstuck, who unlocks all of your passion. A coach who helps people discover what drives them to tap into their superpowers that knowing your why is the first step to untap potential, to focus, to breakthroughs. A coach who's looking for a better way. Are you that coach? And welcome back everyone to Geek Skeezers Googleization. We are thrilled to have Mark Kumachek, certified dream coach with us today. We're talking about solving this huge divide 
of finding fulfillment and purpose and meaning in the work that you do. As we talked about earlier at the top of the show, 85% of senior level executives feel like they have purpose in the work that they're doing, but we only have 15% of our frontline staff who feel that same way. And so we're talking about one of the remedies that helps solves this dream programs. And so Mark, before we left off and went to the commercial break, I asked you to, to think about some success stories and transformational stories. So let's hear one in terms of a transformational story for a person and then another one for a business. Sure. And I, I, man, it's hard to, so hard to choose, man. It's so hard to choose because there's so many good ones, but I'll, 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 I have a fresh one, a couple from this week, as a matter of fact, Allie, for example, and I'm changing some names here, uh, but she works for an organization, um, does some account executive type work. Uh, and she kind of walked into this whole dream experiment a little bit shy about jumping into this of opening up and really getting in touch with her life goals and dreams. Um, but over a six month period of time has fully embraced it. And it's been cool. And it's not, again, not necessarily huge life goals and dreams. She has ambitions of starting a hobby of refurbishing furniture and restoring furniture, for example. And just in the past month, she sent me, uh, just before Thanksgiving, she sent me an email and said, I did it. And with a picture of something she refurbished and she was so excited about it. Um, in addition to that, she's just reinvigorated some things and relationships in her life. Um, but the cool thing about this, and this ties right into the business, Jason, is she is taking what she's learning from going through a coaching experience and utilizing it in her account executive responsibilities, number one. And she sent me some information or some screenshots of some text in working with her dad as well and coaching him through some situations. So not only is she chasing her life goals and dreams, but from the experience, she's taking away these skills that she's applying at work and in her life as a whole and creating these ripples, which is really, really cool to see. So what you're saying is for those who are thinking, oh, this is just another separate program. No, it's not. This is right. fully integrated into every aspect of your life. It helps you function better in many of the day-to-day -day responsibilities and tasks and pieces of your work, but it also helps you with some of those interpersonal relationships as well, if I'm hearing you right. Absolutely. Yeah. You're inevitably, as you move towards a life goal and dream, you're going to challenge yourself to develop some new skills, some new, uh, you're going to, you're going to learn a few things along the way that you can apply to other aspects of your life. And Allie is just hers in her scenario it was those coaching skills and articulating and asking the right questions and learning how to quietly listen while people wrestle with those. And she's been able to utilize that to become a better business person and a better uh, leader within her family. I love that. And so that's a perfect personal story of why people should care about these dream programs, how it can unlock um, their dreams for them personally. And now how about on the flip side of that, how about a story around a business? What does it look like for a business whenever they bring one of these programs in and use it with their teams, what does success and transformation look like in the business when they leverage these programs? Sure. Uh, one, one local company here in Northeast Wisconsin that I've been blessed to work with since the, the day they opened the door, um, they're in the uh, employee benefits space. So health insurance and the like, and they're a broker, but they're doing things in a non-traditional way. Um, as they were developing their um, values or valued behaviors, one of those was that they are very clear on from day one was let's maximize the potential of each individual person within the organization, not employee, but person. So they've tied their dream program directly to that valued behavior and take it very seriously in a lighthearted way. So in that organization, I work with 80% of the employees. So I'm their one-to-one -one dream coach. Plus, I'm working with them quarter, at least quarterly. We're doing some sort of workshop as a group together as well. So it's really meshed into the fabric of their culture, of their organization. And as truly, you know, they're in the benefit space. It's becoming one of their uh, most valuable benefits that they're providing to their people. And now we're in a position where we're starting to roll it out and make it available to their clients as well. 
And that's where you, you mentioned in some of the lead in to Jason, 21 days of dreaming. Um, I saw some of the promo for this episode, 21 days. That led me to start building things that were more scalable so that we could help more and more people um, organizationally and individually uh, get in touch with life goals and dreams. So you mentioned a lot of things that are really interesting there, Mark. Um, and here soon, I'm going to ask you kind of the final question before we go into the lightning round. But before we get to that one, the thing you mentioned there that was really interesting to me was you used the word benefit, that many times this is like an extra benefit in addition to the, the package of total rewards that go to employees. Right. Um, with, with that, with it being viewed as a benefit, are there ever times where um, an EAP becomes involved in bringing this alongside as a, a, as a primary, secondary, and tertiary level of support throughout the organization? I haven't had any of those formal relationships where we're, we're working together um, directly at this point, Jason, uh, but there are some explorations going on as we speak. I love it. And the reason I asked that, again, we have a lot of HR leaders, and so they're yes. probably thinking, well, how can I bring this in? Like, would it be possible for this to be somehow tied to the EAP supports that we provide for everybody in the organization? But I think that's a, a brilliant way to look at it is it's not only a strategic thing, but it really is a benefit to everyone right. in the organization. And we're even seeing some companies like BetterUp, which is a, a coaching group. Right. One of the things they offer their employees is they get free BetterUp coaching um, yes. as part of that. And so I, I right. love whenever we start talking about and thinking about uh, benefits in innovative ways, especially things that have to do with people's mental wellness and mental health and getting a sense of purpose and fulfillment from what they do. All right. So here's the question I need to ask you before we hop into our popular lightning round. We always ask this question, and it is, what was a question that I should have asked you today that I didn't? Hmm. What do I want for Christmas? Oh, that's a really good one. Well, Mark, what do you want for Christmas? Well, I would say this, and this is uh, its going to sound cheesy. However, it, it truly is an inbox full of people mentioning to me a, a life goal or dream that they uncovered. That's number one. Uh, new running shoes. I'm, I love running would be number two. And related to that, I just recently threw my hat in the lottery for getting into the Chicago Marathon next year. So I would love to get in that as well. How's I love that? it. A, a trifecta of answers. I love it. That's great. And certainly if, if you follow Mark on LinkedIn, um, are you the only Mark Kumachek on LinkedIn, Mark? I am the only Mark Kumachek in the whole entire world. So yeah, <laughs> oh, truly. Wow. There, no, there's that's not a common last name, as you uh, probably guessed. Um, there's probably a 30 of us with that last name in the whole entire world. So I'm, well, that's what I thought. If a, people, a rarity. <laughs> so if, you, if folks just looked you up on LinkedIn and they put in Kumachek, C-U-M-I-C-E-K, that you would probably be the smiling face that they would see in More order than likely. to follow your yes. story. And, and you post a lot of things on LinkedIn that are very inspirational that have to do with dreaming. Um, so I really encourage all of you out there, uh, reach out to Mark, follow him on LinkedIn. That's where he posts a lot of resources, daily updates, inspirational messages around the things that he's doing um, and follow him there. You can also, you see that uh, for those of you that are watching, the banner at the bottom has his website, onwarddream.com. And then if you put a backslash there and put 21 days after it, so onwarddream.com forward slash 21 days, it's going to take you to um, a 21 day program he has that is automated and helps you kickstart your journey of dreaming, um, which is really powerful. And so Mark, it's, I can't believe we're coming up against our time here, uh, but now it's time for our popular segment that's called the lightning round. And so on the lightning round, we're going to ask you just a few questions to get to know you a little bit better personally um, and help our audience get to know you as well. Are well, you ready? I'm going to get nervous at this point and not earlier. <laughs> that, well, hey, that's common. Most folks get a little bit more nervous. I'm tensing up. The personal stuff. It's like, yeah, you got to take the professional hat off. Now we're putting the, the personal hat on. But I promise this is not going to be like any type of inside edition, tabloid, paparazzi story. We're not going to go that deep. All right. All right. But we but we do want to have some fun with it. So here we go. Let's start with this one. Who is your favorite musician or favorite musical artist? I'm going to go with 
Tom Petty. And particularly, if you ask me what a walk-up song was, so if I was a Major League Baseball player, what would they play when I was walking to, up to home plate to take some swings? It would be um, Tom Petty, Running Down a Dream. Oh, that is awesome. I'm a big Tom Petty fan as well, and so is my, my in-laws side of the family. Uh, seen him many times in concerts, so many great hits, and I love that. That's I think that's the first time we've gotten Tom Petty so far for that answer. So kudos to you. I love it. All right. How about this one? Um, what is a favorite food or a dessert? Hmm. Well, considering we're coming out of Thanksgiving, I get picked on a lot around here for my obsession with pumpkin pie with a uh, cool whip on top. So that's, that's gotta be it. No one else in my house likes pumpkin pie. We ran a turkey trot, a local turkey trot, and we each earned a pumpkin pie out of that. Um, and I've been the only one consuming them. So that's, uh, that's got to be my choice. <laughs> Good training food for the Chicago Marathon. Yes. Yes, sir. Now, the real, so the additional question to that is, do you ever eat pumpkin pie outside of this time of year? Uh, generally, no, but I try to extend the period of time as much as possible away from Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's what I try to do with candy canes also. It's like, hey, I can have candy canes in the summer. That's all yeah, right. Yeah, why not? Exactly. Love it. All right. Let's think about superpowers now. If you could choose any superpower, what would it be? Wow. Okay. Um, considering I have a slight running obsession and that's my thing, I would say really, really fast. Super speed. That's I think that's the first we've gotten that one as well. So get the the flash super power what right. so with the speed so with the speed what would you do would you just enter races so that you could get first place every time or would it be to travel to certain destinations what would you do with the super speed yeah it's less about to me at this point it's less about winning races and uh more about because one of my dreams is to uh run all the marathon majors around the world so london berlin new york chicago boston tokyo i think i got them all so yeah to be able to get to those locations quickly then I don't really care about what time because I, I we could slow down during the races, but it would be one. It would be fun to win one every once in a while. But uh, overall, it's more about getting to the destination. Very cool. And let, let's go back to high school or maybe even earlier. What do you think your classmates would be surprised to see about Mark Kumachek now? <laughs> I guess that I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, you know, uh, who would have guessed that uh, at this point in my life that this guy that graduated from a small rural high school uh, in a farming town would be a certified dream manager. No one would even had any clue what that was back then. Uh, so I think that would be pretty surprising. Would it, it, would it have been surprising to you back then as well, that this is what you're doing now? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, it's yes. I want growing up, I wanted to be a meteorologist for a period of time when I was really young. Then I got into my sports phase. So baseball, basketball, football player, um, and then I moved into, Hey, I just, I'm going to go get a business degree and work in businesses. <laughs> and, and I didn't know exactly what that meant, but my whole upbringing, I mean, my family was in banking and finance. So I think I just assumed that's where I would end up. Very cool. All right. And, and last one, you kind of touched on this one a little bit, but I've got to ask the dream manager, what is your big dream? I've got quite a few of them. I've got a whole dream book, uh, but I'll pick out the one that probably sits on top of my heart the most. Um, would be the Appalachian Trail, doing the Appalachian Trail straight through. Um, and because it's really, it's a physical challenge. It's an intellectual challenge. It's a spiritual opportunity as well. And I, I would ideally like to do some segments of it by myself and some segments with other people that are important to me in my life. I love it. That's awesome. Well, hey, I will be cheering you on when you do that. I won't be joining you. But I will absolutely come on. Just a couple miles, Jason. No, 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 no. <laughs> my my dream is to not do that. <laughs> the, the least amount of running is possible. Um, but hey, Mark, thank you so much for coming on today and and sharing your expertise and wisdom with us. But before we let you go, what are some ways that people can get in touch with you? And then, what are some of the the special things that you may be doing or offering right now that might be of interest to folks? Sure. You mentioned earlier, LinkedIn's probably the best way to get to know me better and to follow what I'm up to and and hopefully get inspired by a few things because I'm fairly active out there. Uh, so if you're on LinkedIn, look me up. 
Uh, my company name is Onward. It's probably easier to spell than uh, Kumachek if you're if you're searching on LinkedIn for that. Uh, just you mentioned earlier as well the 21 Days of Dreaming program. That's just a really good way to get started for you as an individual or even something to bring to your team. What we're doing, we talked about this dreamstorming concept in the past and earlier in the in the show. What that's doing is taking some of those questions and just spreading them over 21 days and making it more of a a long lasting experience for your people. Um, so that's a really good place to start, and it's it's uh, set up to be very accessible for people from an investment perspective. Love it. Mark, thank you for doing this important work in the world. Thank you for hopping on with us today. Um, and we wish you the very merriest and happiest of holidays this season. And we'll have to have you back on again in 2023 sometime. Awesome, Jason. Really appreciate the opportunity. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, wish everyone joy, hope, and dreams. And hope those, all those things find a, a welcoming home in each and every one of you this holiday season. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. So there you have it, folks. Um, we covered a lot in, in 45 minutes. Um, big takeaways for me today were, you know, don't don't view these dream programs like Mark has, certified dream managers like Mark, as something separate that you do, but really as something that's woven into the fabric of things that you're already doing inside your organization. And if you're an individual person, um, you don't have to wait for your organization to sign up for these things. You can actually do it yourself and start that journey yourself. But one of the, the sayings, Mark didn't say it today, but he shared it with me um, that, that really resonates with me when I think about dreaming um, is a quote he shares from Ralph Waldo Emerson, which is, don't let the music die inside of you. Um, and that is every single person has inspiration, has dreams. But sometimes you won't know that unless you take the time to be quiet, listen and articulate those and write them down. And if there's one thing, I, I hope that you have the opportunity, all of you that are out there listening, that you'll take during this upcoming season of renewal, of, of being thankful and grateful, is that you'll take some time, even if it's just 15 to 30 minutes, just sit in silence and ask yourself questions like, who am I? What do I want my life to be about? What is my why that I want to contribute toward? And I guarantee you, when you start asking those questions, you'll start to tease things out that align with the dreams that you want to achieve. And it'll help you get off uh, in the right foot, step in the right direction as we head into 2023. We want to thank our listeners, Googleization Nation, um, for tuning in today. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, um, please do so. We're on all of the major audio podcast platforms. And then also drop us a, a rating and review if you haven't done that as well. You can also join um, Googleization Nation, um, which is our, um, our community that we have. And that's scrolling across the bottom, GoogleizationNation.com. It's completely free, but that's where we're going to have lots of different offers, content that's going to be coming out in 2023. So you don't want to miss out on that either. Also want to give a special thank you to our sponsor, Y Institute, for partnering uh, with us and sponsoring this episode. And uh, last and certainly not least, thank you, Mark Kumachek, um, again, for coming on and sharing the wisdom and insights around dreaming and how important it is not only for people, but for businesses as well, so we can get more people getting a sense of fulfillment from the work that they do. I'm Jason Cochran. And until next time, don't let the shift hit your plans. Hey.